you declare variables at the top of a script. When you declare a variable, you associate a type with a variable name. You can initialize variables in the start and awake functions. By default, Unity provides you the start function to use for initializing variables. If you wish to use the awake function, which is called before the start function, you should simply type in void awake followed by these parentheses and then these curly brackets. Now I know that I put my curly brackets starting down here and over here the start function has it here. That's just a matter of stylizing the code and personal preference. It is perfectly okay if you do that if you don't do that and you choose to leave the bracket up here. Now, th now it is important to initialize a variable and assign it a def default value in order that the program recognizes the variable as having a value. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to remove the awake function for the purposes of this demonstration and I'm going to initialize my variables in the start function. I'm going to declare a few different types of variables at the top here. I'm going to say float and then I'm going to say 5. Now what this does, once I put a semicolon, is the semicolon signifies the end of the line and then float 5 means that the type float is going to be associated with the variable 5. Now I'm going to hit enter and I'm also going to say bool and I'm going to call this yes. What this means is that a variable called yes or named yes is of the type bool. And bool is a type, it's boolean, which is a true or false value. Float up here means that my number is going to have a decimal point followed by something after it. And I'm going to choose to make one more type of variable. I'm going to say string word. Now up here, I've declared these variables. That means I've associated a variable name with a type. Now in the start function, I would initialize these variables or provide them with a default value. It is very important to remember to assign a variable a value that is the same type that was included in the declaration as the type of the, at the top of the script. If those two types don't match, an error will be thrown. So let's take a look at the right and the wrong way to initialize our variables. One wrong way to initialize our variable would be to say 5 equals 5. That's wrong. Why is that wrong? Because we've identified 5 as a floating point variable, but here we've assigned it an integer value. The proper way to initialize this variable would be to give it something like that with a, a number with a decimal point followed by zero. Note that the variable name is not in any way linked to, to some sort of meaning. I could just as easily put four here. No error will be thrown. These names here are arbitrary. It's really the type of variable that matters. Now to make your code more readable, you're going to want to assign meaningful variable names. As you'll notice, I've assigned a meaningful full variable name to each of these values, variables. Let me show you what I mean. When I use my bool of type, when I initialize my bool with the name yes, right, I'm going to give it a value of true. That's because a boolean value could either be true or false. So I decided to call it true. Now you'll see here that the proper way is lowercase t-r-u-e. And you'll notice that because it turns green. Now if I were to type in true here, it wouldn't recognize it, but I can see from the IntelliSense, which pops up and gives me our like, sort of autocomplete, if I hit enter here and then put a semicolon, it fills in the correct value for me. Lastly, I'll do word, and then I'm going to say equals, and I'll put in quotation marks word. This is just a word. It's a string. Now, a string could also contain spaces, which are also characters, and it could also contain another word. So the important thing to note here that even though this is called word, you could include multiple words within one string. But again, to keep your code readable, we're just going to do it like this. And please remember also, if I was to take this Boolean value and initialize it a, very, a value of 6, save my script and then close out my script, 
coming here to Unity and go to the console, it's going to tell me that the constant value 6 cannot be converted to a bool. Now, we also got another error. Literal of type double cannot be implicitly converted to type float. Add a suffix of f to create a literal of this type. We're going to double click this error. So as you'll see here, there was one mistake that I made. I have to add an f after a floating point value. So that's important because there's going to be a lot of times when you're programming and even if you're experienced, you may forget to add an f at the end of something with a decimal point that you've identified as a float. But as soon as you see that error, you'll know exactly what it means. The other error that was being thrown was that yes is initialized to an integer value. We're going to change that back to true so that it's with a boolean value. And now, once we have all of this typed properly, we're good to go. We've declared our variables and we've initialized them, and now our game recognizes them in our game world.